more valuable, more significant, more skilled, so that we can thrive in this, in this new environment. I mean, I learned that early from my father. You know, he immigrated from Italy, uh, uh, started, the only thing he could do was, was be a garbage collector in San Francisco. He decided that wasn't a career for him. And I remember him going to school at night and becoming a machinist, which was his, his, his joy. And, and that transition and that change is just an example of what we all have to do to make ourselves stronger, more relevant, more valuable all the time. And the final point is through this journey of our career, of our life, is we can't become a victim. We can't let setbacks put us down. We've all had them. You know, as a CEO for many years, I know most of my peers, we would all, you know, joke around sometimes how we've all been fired. You know, we've all failed at some point. But through that, the strong among us will learn, will gain insight, will gain perspective, will get stronger, and never allow ourselves to be a victim because we will have things that don't work out for us. That's just part of the journey. Okay, let's talk about the five principles or lessons uh, that I have learned and I want to share with you today. The first one is to always strive to make a difference. What I mean by that is that each and every day, every single task we're given, we have an opportunity to do something with it better than anybody else. To really believe we can make a difference. It's a wonderful way to live your life. No day is insignificant. No relationship is insignificant. No task you're given is too small. They're all opportunities to make a difference because we never know where success and opportunity will come from. I learned this early in my career at HP. I started in the finance department. I can remember like it was yesterday, my first day at new employee orientation. You remember those days when you walk in, you, I had my only suit on. I was gonna say my best suit, but it was my only suit. And I was ready to go. Uh, I was in a room with about eight of us, new hires, all starting Monday morning. Everyone went around and introduced themselves and told their background, and that was a scary moment for me because I found that every single person in that room was older than me, had more experience than me. They had MBAs from named schools like Harvard and Stanford. They had real work experience, and here I was, an undergraduate degree from a small school. My only work experience was selling shoes at JC Penney's. And, and I just felt totally like, why am I here? How did I get this job? They must have made a mistake. I can remember my guidance counselor, Mrs. Walraven, her words in my, in my ear saying, you know, you'll never be a success. You know, you barely made it through high school. All of those forces were behind me, but I decided that the message for me was that I had to make a difference. That what ultimately was going to matter was not where my work experience was, was not even my education. What was going to matter was each and every day, every single task and opportunity I was given, that I was going to give it my all, I was going to make a difference, and I was going to do better than anybody else. So always strive to make a difference. Number two, throughout taking on tough assignments, risk, we have decisions to make through our career. And I encourage you to look for tough assignments, to look for the things that don't seem doable, because out of that often are some of the greatest opportunities. For whatever reason, I found myself in my technology career often getting into situations that were difficult, that were challenging. Businesses that had to be turned around, companies that had to be saved, products that didn't work. You know, and, I, and through that process, I learned a lot, I, I gained expertise, but I found new opportunities and new ways to be successful that were really significant. It was true getting Xbox, very hard project to do at Microsoft, but one that was very successful. So tough assignments, risk, challenges, make us better, make us stronger, and often are the path to really significant success. The third point, is being self-aware and open to feedback. This is really important, and this is something that I have tried to make very specific about me, and that is that I can take feedback. In fact, I look for feedback. People can tell me things I don't want to hear, because in our world today, especially in the workplace, our bosses 
often don't want to tell us things that we don't want to hear, if we don't make it easy for them to give us criticism, to give us feedback, we miss important information. So I always try to, to, to work very hard to be able to make it inviting for people to tell me things that I know will make me better. I don't even have to agree with them, but I want them to tell me. I want to be able to process it and constantly work to make myself better. I learned this in a lot of ways, but, but one of the most memorable was when I first became a supervisor at HP. I thought I had arrived. I was very young, almost unheard of at my age to be managing people, but I had eight or people or so reporting to me. And I thought, you know, I'd go home at night, you know, I was in my 20s, I think I was a boss. I managed people. I was in charge. Uh, wow, it was just like an amazing feeling. But something happened after about three weeks that I didn't think was possible. My work group revolted. <laughs> I didn't think they could do that. I didn't even think it was allowed, but they did. They all went into my boss and said, we can't work for this guy, he's impossible. And I was blown away, oblivious to the whole situation. I went home that night totally, instead of walking home proud, I walked home like I was a loser. My work group revolted. And I turned it around that night in some way, and I, I remember going back the next morning and going to my boss, quite humble, saying, you know, I really want to learn and get better and take this feedback and have another chance. And he gave that to me. And I went and interviewed each person one by one, and I, I, I listened, and I wrote down a development plan. I went back to my boss, and, and he agreed, and, and off I went. It was a really important lesson for me. It changed my life, changed my career. And I learned from that that I never wanted to be oblivious again. It was going to be easy for people to tell me what I didn't want to hear. And I was going to be proactive at getting better and being a better leader. When I left Hewlett Packard a lot of years later, I managed 73,000 people. And so I learned to lead that first experience made me a different person. But the point for all of us, whether it's a relationship, whether it's our kids, it's professional, whatever, be open to feedback. Invite people to be able to express their views to you so that you can get better and like me, and never be oblivious again. The fourth point is pers about perseverance. Perseverance does matter. The road to success is not even. It's not consistent. We have setbacks. We do things that aren't quite right. In my last CEO assignment, I spent eight years reinventing a company. And while we had the basic strategy and plan right from the very beginning, the way we pursued it was not even. We had to step back and reconsider and change a bunch of adversity along the way, things we never expected issues we couldn't resolve fast enough. But as long as you believe in the mission, as you believe in where you're going, you need to persevere, you need to keep trying, you need to step back and reconsider, take a new path, but continue to pursue that mission, that dream that you believe is so important. And the final point that I'll close with is about integrity. Very important to me, one that I look back now over my long career and say this is something that is, has been an important part of, of my upbringing, my early years at Hewlett Packard, to basically uh, do the right thing, have the right values, take a long-term perspective, treat people with respect, don't take shortcuts, don't take bad advice. All of the risks that you have today to get into a difficult situation, I certainly had throughout my career. I had many experts to tell me, you know, you could do this and it's going to be okay. And I always went to my basic judgment, which is, is it the right thing to do? Because often you, we'd be in situations where we'd be analyzing all this data, looking at the pros and cons, you know, and there, it seemed confusing. And to step back and say, but what's the right thing to do? 
Sounds simple, sounds trite, would always be clarified. And let me tell you, it's often not the easiest thing to do. In fact, it's usually not the easiest thing to do. But that basic principle, to be able to go through a career and be viewed as a person of integrity, a person of principle, a person who treated people with respect, is something that is very valuable and will serve you well and leads to success. In the middle of my career, in the middle of my time at Hewlett Packard, I had a call one day from David Packard, one of the founders. And he invited me to his ranch to have a talk. It absolutely shocked me. I'll never forget the day when my assistant says, Dave Packard's on the phone, he wants to talk to you. He had never called me before. I didn't even think he was very active in the company. There were hundreds of thousands of people in the company, and he called me and asked me to come to his ranch, only to call me a few minutes later, which I thought, of course, he had made a mistake, and he was uninvited me. But in fact, he called me and 